So now you're taking off the fuel filter. It's the coldest hand that run down this land. All right, so these are those two washers. Another olive. Let's see if I can crack this rusty one. You're just pulling that little pump off by itself? Yeah, I was trying to pull the pump off and pull the, uh, I didn't, you can't, you can get no throw on uh, this I nut. See. It's so rusty. Don't bust your knuckle. Right? Exactly what's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> What a fly! <laughs> nice. It is nice. Good catch. That is nice. Isn't that Borat says that? <laughs> what? Fuel pump off. No, fuel filter off. Fuel filter off. Fuel now pump. the lift pump has lift an pump. arm that every time I move this damn <gasps> thing. Lift pump off. Has that ever been taken apart? You've taken this apart before. I'm not taking it apart. Oh. Look how rusty it is. Yeah, we need to get that. Do we need a different lift pump? Or a new one, or a I, mean, I don't know. This is the this has got that hand button for hand priming it. Okay, it when there. there's an error. Right when you're, this thing rides on the camshaft right. in the engine. But when you go, if you have to bleed this thing by hand, that's why I put in that electric pump. It's because it's a horrible, time-consuming. Well, yeah. Plus you're like in in the, in the engine while it's running, like your hand. Trying are. to, yeah. So I leave for five minutes and you start taking the engine apart. What are you doing? Taking off the intake manifold. It's a uh, five bolts. Plus a two from the alternator bracket. <gasps> Beautiful. So that's the air intake. Okay. Whoa. Looks pretty dirty in there. That's all gonna get cleaned. And this intake, I'm, like the air. That's where the air comes in and mixes with the fuel. Well, that all happens in the combustion chamber, but yeah, this is where the air comes into the engine. How dirty is it supposed to be? Not this dirty. Got the injectors out. The rockers, everything under the oil. The rocker cover looks really good, actually. I'm pretty impressed. Well, had that grind. There was a little bit, yeah, a little bit of rust right there. But yeah. All right. What's next? Well, I have to take the whole rocker assembly off. I'd like to get those fuel, those little high pressure lines out of the way that we're going to the injector nozzles. And it's some wires to disconnect. I want to pull, I'm going to go ahead and pull the starter motor before anything. I'm just pulling the throttle cable off. I'm going to figure it's easier just to get all this stuff out of the way. Good Lord, dude. Does this need to be this big? <laughs> it takes a lot to, it's a lot of torque. There's a lot of compression in this diesel engine. It looks like there's some nicking on the ring gear, on the teeth. I'm gonna have to get in and look at it with a flashlight. Oh, yeah, I see. Well, I'm just seeing just chunks, little tip, little, doesn't look like it's too bad a shape. There's a drain port over here and I can't tell, but it seems like it's gonna be a coolant drain. On the side of the engine? Block? Yeah. yeah, anything. But there is no coolant in the engine. Well, uh, when I ran the camera into the front of the water pump port, there's still water sitting in the low point down here. The, cam the camera went underwater. But nothing came out when you took that I off. I thought it was a block drain, but nothing came out. There's a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, yeah, it's coolant. It's a coolant drain, but it's not draining down the cylinder head. So this little valve over here that I opened, yeah. That's the block drain. So, so it was blocked. It wasn't doing that It before. was clogged. I had to, I opened it and nothing was barely coming out. And then I so stuffed a bamboo water? skewer in there. Yeah, it's just water. It's just kind of gunky water. Just so everybody knows, we That's flushed the, all the coolant out. Yeah, this is water. just water. This is just water and 
engine debris. <laughs> Whatever other schmutz is hiding inside cool this it. engine. Yeah, coolant debris. There, ooh, you see there's some chunks. So this is what the water drained out. Yeah, yeah, look at those rusty passages. That's just crap and whatnot. I put this thing back together, I'll probably do it in the shed, put the rocker the shaft and everything. I don't know. Do you want a little container for those? Are you leaving them all? No, I'm gonna put them all back. I need to put them all back in the exact same spot, just to make sure. I need towel. another paper towel. These uh, all have to go back in the same order as well, the uh, push rods. Yeah, we can do that. Set it inside that box after I wipe it down. Okay, there's still oil leaking out of them. These all, this pipe is hollow. Yeah. And oil squirts through it and then also spills out each one of these little holes. So that's how the lubrication is just basically, I forget what they call it, splash lubrication or flinging, flail <laughs> oil, flailing lubrication. I'm sure that's it. It's basically how it works. And then it, those drain back down through the holes in the top of the block there right. to the push rod all the way back down to the sump to be re-pumped back up with the uh, oil pump. I'm going to wipe down the top end and just, I think I'm going to call it for today. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe I'll get the head off tomorrow. I think I've got it. It's on fire. It's on fire? Oh, fuck. Hey, welcome back. It's been a long week. I haven't done much uh, on the boat. I went back through, dug around and found some more uh, junk inside the shed. Uh, it's time to, we're going to have to start uh, cleaning some of this stuff up and figure out what all is saveable and what needs to be replaced. Uh, I was watching somebody else's Perkins video and realized that a bunch of the bolts and everything that I'd removed from the header tank and the exhaust manifold, water fittings, things like that, are poof, disappeared. So we got to take inventory, take stock of what we got, and then figure out what we need to do uh, to put this thing back together. I got some simple green. We're going to scrub everything down, um, see what we can save, see what looks good and is only smoke damaged, but uh, we'll figure it out. All right. Supply up. The worst part of not having the shed or having the shed burned down is not having the shed to clean up the stuff that was burned at the shed. This sucks. <laughs> I don't know how good a shape it is, but this is the crossover pipe between the header tank and the uh, exhaust manifold. This thing was still masked off from getting painted after I had it hot tanked. And so the masking tape has just melted itself to the friggin' uh, these flare fittings. I'm probably gonna have to unpipe everything and change the sealant because it had Teflon tape on it. It's probably shot. This, oh shoot. Look at this. What is it? What is that? This is the solder that holds these pipes to the tank. See these uh, mold? These are cast, like cast bronze, and these are copper pipe. And the solder has actually dripped down and melted out of this and melted right here. So these joints probably aren't going to pass a pressure test. This thing was sitting just like this in the shed, so the heat on the surface caused this stuff to melt and run down this way, it looks like. So the simple green actually isn't doing too bad. Yeah. Just need to do some scraping on it. The masking tape that was down below yeah. when the when the shed Still got there. flooded with fire water. Um, oh, look, it looks brand new. Yeah, look at that. That's the, uh, that's the way it came back from the hot tank. Listen. What's in there? No idea. Is that a rock? Just fell out. It's right here. The very edge here. Maybe it is. You know, when they were blasting fire water all over the thing, they probably just knocked gravel all over the inside of the shed yeah. when they ripped the doors off. This is part of our plan B. We have this dock box that just has junk in it that we don't want on the boat. And I think what we're going to do is I'm going to clean this out and take most of this to the apartment for a few months. And we'll just use this dock box as our like 
place where we store the stuff we're working on while we are um, at work <laughs> during the week. And then that way the boat's not just a total disaster with engine parts and stuff everywhere. That's the way it's gone for Vegas tonight. MGM Grand Detroit Intervention Report coming your way. It's three seconds playing time. What are you now, doing? Nothing. Or what were you looking at? The new engine. <laughs> I'm weighing our options because everything melted in the shed. It's about 17 and three quarters. So I think a beta 43 will fit.